hi everyone welcome to the channel in today's video i'm going to be showing you how to sew a simple peplum top with a box split i'll be using two yards of fabric so the first thing i'm going to be doing is to measure out my chest line my bust line my waist line and then from the top line i mark half of my shoulder measurements and connect it to the chest line then from this line i go down by one inch and i also mark my neck width and i connect both points together and then on the bust line i mark my half of my nipple to nipple measurement and connect it to the waist line and then from the bust line i go down by one inch while connecting while on the waist line i mark 0 0.5 inch on both sides and i connect When we're done with this on the chest line i mark quarter of my bust measurements while on the waistline i mark quarter of my waist measurement plus one inch for the darts i connect it together i'm also adding half one inch sewing allowance to this and then on this line i will divide it by two and i'll go in by 0 0.5 inch and then i'll connect it using a french curve for the back i'm connecting it to the actual line and then I'm going to be adding half an inch sewing allowance to the shoulder line and from here I'll cut it out now I'm cutting out the back pattern then when you're done cutting you're going to remove it and I'll just trace out the lines for the back for the back we will not be using a zipper so I'm going to be cutting out that point and I'm going to draw out my sewing allowance at the side seam. Then from here, I'm going to mark out my nipple to nipple measurement, half of my nipple to nipple measurement, and I'll connect it all the way to the chest line. But then I'm going down by one inch. Then I'll trace out my sewing allowance. And then from this point, I'm going to divide that line by two, and then I'll draw a straight line all the way to the chest line. And then, from one inch below the chest line i'm going to draw a line and then i will use a french curve to connect it it's just me trying to create the beautiful design that we have at the back then after doing this i cut it out i'm also going to be removing the darts because i don't want to add that to the back and then i close it like this When you're done closing, you observe that there is a bulkiness at the neckline. So I'm just going to be evening it out and then cutting it off. Then that will be all for the back. While for the front, we'll be adding a zip to the front. So I'm going to be leaving that zipper allowance in front. And then because of the bust that we are adding to these bodies, I'll be adding, I'll be extending the waistline of this bodice. So I want to add one inch bust that to this. So I'm extending the waistline by one inch. If you're adding a one and a half bust that, one and a half inch bust that to this, that means you'll be extending the waistline by one and a half inch. So after extending the line, I'm going to be marking out half of my nipple to nipple measurements on the new waistline that we have and I'll be connecting it to draw the dot on the new waistline. And then on this point, from that chest line, I'm going down by 2.75 inch while on from the, the half of the nipple to nipple measurements, I'm marking 1.5 inch away from it. And then I'm connecting it all the way to the 2.75 inch that we marked. And then on this point, I'm going to be marking 0 0.5 inch on both sides to make the one inch that's that we want to create. Then after connecting, I'm also going to extend it all the way to the sewing allowance that we have. Yeah, I'm just trying to 
um, shape the waistline of the front. You, this is completely optional. If you don't want to do this, you can leave it. I just don't want any excess in front, so I'm just cutting it off. And then from this point, I'm going to be marking out, drawing out my neckline. I'm using a scoop neckline for this, so I'm just using a French curve and connecting it all the way close to the chest line. You can use any neckline of your choice. And then from here, you observe that the shoulder line of the front is not equal with that of the back, but I'm going to be showing you how you can adjust that using the rope at the back. So now the first thing I'm going to be doing is to be cutting the full circle of this peplum first before we cut the bodice pattern. So I have my fabric on fold and the width of it is 35 inches while the length of it on fold is 17.5 inches. So I'm going to fold it further into four pieces and then from here the width and length of it should be 17.5 inches that is forming a square so from this point i'm going to divide my waist measurement by six and i'll be timesing it by two so my waist measurement is 24 divided by six is four inches times two that is four inches times two is eight inches so i'm marking eight inches all around and then the length of the peplum that i want to use is 8.5 inches so 8.5 inches plus 8 inches, we have about 16.5 inches. Then I'm also adding 1 inch sewing allowance to it, and I'll mark 17.5 inches at the down part of this peplum. So I'm going to be marking 17.5 inches all round. So when you're done with this, you're just going to cut it out and you have the peplum. Take note that I times my waist measurement by two because of the box split that we intend on creating. Remember to notch the necessary points by the time you're done. I'm going to be using this as a guide when I am doing the box splits. When you're done notching the necessary points, you're going to place it on the lining and you cut exactly what we have here. Then after cutting on the lining, we're going to open it up like this and we're going to be cutting one side open. That part that we are cutting open will be attaching the zipper to. So I've also gone ahead to cut the bodies on the fabric and I've also cut out the lining as well. At this point, I've also gone ahead to add interfacing to the front. You can add it to the back or to the lining, just depends on what you prefer. And then from here, I'm going to be tracing out the dots on the fabric and I will take the dots. And then after taking the dot, this is what I have. To be honest, my, my camera wasn't doing justice to this because at this point, the bust area was very prominent. And then I've also done the same thing for the lining as well. Then after that, we are going to be placing the fabric to the lining and we are going to be sewing on the neckline using half an inch sewing allowance. And then I'm also going to do the same thing for the back. I'll place the lining to the fabric and to the main fabric and I'll be sewing half an inch sewing al allowance all around. And then when you're done sewing and notching and top stitching it, you're going to turn it to the wrong side like so and you're going to sew closing that zipper point. At this point, I've also gone ahead to cut out two pieces that I'll be using for the design at the back. The width of this is four to five inches, while the length of it is dependent on your body size. So by the time you place this piece on the fabric, the shoulder line should be equal to your actual shoulder line and the length of it should be long enough to reach the other end. So you take it to the sewing machine and you're going to be sewing. I sewed the down part to be about one inch wide while the shoulder line should be equal to my shoulder measurements. So now I'm going to be placing it like so and I'm going to be sewing on it. Then after sewing on the shoulder and on the down part, this is what I have. 
So after doing this, I'm going to be placing the front on it like this and I'm going to be sewing on the shoulder and on the side seam. Then after join, joining it, this is what I have. So at this point, I'm just reducing the waistline of the back because I observed it was longer than that of the front. It's completely optional. If you don't want to do this, you can leave it as it is. So at this point, I've also gone ahead to cut out the sleeve for this top. I'm using a cap sleeve for this. And to get a cap sleeve, just measure, use your normal basic block and measure from, from the crown to anything above the crown depth. So the length of this is about 3 inches plus 0 0.5 inch sewing allowance at the top and at the down part. So after cutting it, I'm going to be lining it and I'll attach it to the sleeve. And then after attaching it to the sleeve, you're going to hem the remaining part of the armhole that is not covered with the sleeve. After attaching the sleeve to the top, I'm going to be pinning down the zipper line like so. And then at this point, in order to attach the peplum, to this top i'm going to be adding the box plate to the center front i'll add two to the that that is you know three i'm adding two also at the side seam that is five and then i'll add one to the center back that is six then i'll be adding two to the points in between the center back and the side back so in all i'm adding box plate to eight points on this top so at this point, I'm done joining the lining to the fabric and I've also joined it at the zipper line. And then now what I'm doing is I'm using the tape rule to measure around it. Take note that I folded this fabric in two. So after I measure, I got 27 inches. So 27 times two is 54 inches. So I'm going to be minusing two inches for the zipper allowance from the 54, that is 52 inches. And then from this 52 inches, I will minus my waist measurement from it. That is 24, that is 52 minus 24, is 28 inches so i'm going to be dividing 28 inches by the number of pleats that i'm going to be having for this peplum so since we're having eight points that will be adding the pleats to and remember a boss split is all about having two pleats facing each other so that means from the eight points times two that is 16 inches so that means that is 16 so that means we're having 16 pleats all together so 28 divided by 16 so that is 1.75 so that means this the length of each pleat will be 1.75 so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to place this full circle on the, the top like this and i'm going to be aligning the middle of the full circle to the middle of the top and also the zipper side to the zipper side as well then after doing that you're going to the first thing i'm going to do now is to mark out my zipper allowance and then after marking out the zipper allowance i'm going to be marking 1.75 inches on that from that point and then i'll pleat it facing the zipper allowance and how we are pleating it is we are graphing the point in between the 1.75 and the zipper allowance and then we are taking the 1.75 points inward while right? we are bringing that one outside. So after pleating it facing the zipper allowance, from this point, I'm going to align the full circle to the top. Then from the point where the dart is, I'm going to mark it on the full circle. So from that, that point, I'm going to mark 1.75 inches as well so after marking the two points we are going to be pleating it and how we are going to do it is the middle of the two points that is marked i'm going to hold that middle point and i'm going to pleat it facing the zipper allowance while the point that is below will be pleated facing the dot and then from this from here i'm going to mark another 1.75 inch and then I'm going to pleat it from the middle. I'm going to grab the middle and I'll pleat it facing towards the center front while the part that is marked will be pleated facing the dots. I don't know if what I'm saying makes sense, but I'm going to be repeating this process over and over again. And I believe that 
you would understand what I'm doing eventually. So I'm still going to repeat the same process. So from this point, I'm going to mark the point where I want the dart to be. So now I'm doing the side seam. So from that point, I'm going to mark 1.75 inch. So from the middle of these two points, I'm going to grab it and I'll be pleating the middle facing towards the zipper allowance. Then after you pin it down and then you mark 1.75 inch again from that point and then you grab the middle and then you pleat the points that we marked facing the side seam. So when you are doing this, you are making sure that the two points that are facing each other is align, aligning to the side seam. So if you are doing the correct thing, you observe that the distance from one plate is similar to the other. So I'm still going to repeat the same process. Now I'm doing the back side where the dart was supposed to be, but we didn't add any dart. So I'm doing that point now. So I've marked out the point where I wanted that the pleat to be. So from that point, I'm going to mark 1.75 inch. And then this 1.75 inch, I'm going to grab the middle of it. And then I'll pleat it facing the zipper side. And then after pleating, I'll pin it down. And then from this point, I'm going to mark another 1.75 inch and then I'll pleat from the middle. I'm going to pleat the point, the 1.75 points inward and then I'll pin it down. So what we are having now is the first 1.75 that we marked will be on top while the second 1.75 inch that we mark will be below it. So I'm just repeating the same process from the point where I want the, the pleats to be. I'm going to mark 1.75 and then I'll pleat from the middle. I'm going to pleat it facing the zipper side. And then from this point, I also mark facing the other side. So I'm just repeating the same process. And also, the middle of the full circle that will not will be at the center back of the top. And take note that if you are doing the correct thing, by the time you are measuring the width of each pleat, it's going to be 1.75 inch. And also, there will be no SS when you are done pleating. Or even though there will be SS, it will be very little. So when you're done pleating it, you're going to be sewing on it using half an inch sewing allowance. But before pleating sewing, just make sure you turn it to the right side and confirm if the pleat is aligning to the points that we want it to be. Alignment is so important when it comes to box pleats. And then when you sew using half an inch allowance and you turn it to the right side is what it should look like. So all we have to do now is to add our zip to this top. And here we have a simple peplum top with a box pleat. I love this top so much, especially the back. It's just so beautiful. And you can attach a crinoline to it or an interfacing if you want it to stand very well. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in my next one. Thank you.